It's the Daily Dog. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Daily Dog. I am thankful that you are with us today. So for for several weeks, I have been primarily reviewing songs that are uh, viewer submissions. Uh, as we are growing the channel and growing the community, uh, I want to know uh, what all of you are interested in and what music you are passionate about. And it's been very wonderful for me because it allows me to to sort of uh, expand my my repertoire and uh, just understanding of all the music that's out there. And it's been a really uh, great ride so far, and we're going to keep doing it. But I have also had a few people uh, message me and say, you know, uh, we'd love for you to tell us uh, some and show us some of your favorite music so that we can learn as well. And today's video is going to be in that realm uh, because I have seen today a relatively new um, interpretation of a classic song uh, from a classic song cycle in, in classical repertoire and uh, I'm just taken by it. So I wanna show you guys a little bit. This is a very short piece, it's less than two minutes. We're gonna listen to two different versions of it, okay? So the piece is Im uh, Wunderschönen Monat Mai and it is the first um, song of a classic song cycle called Dichterliebe and the composer is Robert Schumann. Uh, this piece was written, uh, composed in 1940. It is in 16 different, it's a collection of 16 different songs and it's designed to be sung and performed as one sort of continuous piece with 16 different little songs that make up the entire cycle. Uh, the poetry, the original poetry is by Heinrich Heine, uh, which was written in the, uh, the 1820s, I believe, the early 1820s. Um, this particular cycle is one of three biggies from this era that sort of form the basis of our leader uh, repertoire. The other two song cycles are by Franz Schubert, uh, Die Schöne Müllerin and uh, Winterreise, right? But this is from Dichter Liebe, which is, uh, was composed in 1840 by Schumann, and it's absolutely wonderful. The original is German. Uh, but we're going to see today a, a new version and interpretation in the Hindustani style, and it's magnificent. So first, let's let's look at uh, the original piece. I have a recording here with the score embedded. Uh, Fritz uh, Wunderlich is on vocals, and Hubert Green, sorry, Hubert Giesen is on the piano for this version. So uh, this is what this piece sounds like. Here we go. translation for the lyrics that was in that first little section is in beautiful may when the buds spring love sprang up in my heart beautiful may All the birds sang. I told you my desire and my longings. Mm. Mm. And it ends on that half cadence, right? Uh, I want to go back a little bit. I told you it was short, right? That's it. This is the first or introductory 
uh, section to this song cycle and it's absolutely wonderful and intimately crafted. I want to take you through a little bit of how it works before we go to this other uh, version. So it's got an interesting way it starts. It doesn't start on a one chord. So if you look here, uh, the basic chord that we have is a D and a, and a B and then this F sharp. It's a B minor chord and that's in first inversion with the D here on the bottom. That's going to be in the key of F sharp minor, uh, minor 4, 6. And then in this note, lay is going to resolve down to sol, right? And then lay back to sol and then, uh, but, but it does something interesting here. Uh, uh, this 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 A sharp is like a little leading tone to this B. This C sharp is a is kind of a hanging out, kind of unsupported upper neighbor to the root of the chord, the B. This big leap up to this G is a leap to a non chord tone, right up to that F sharp over that F sharp and resolves down. And he's got all these little uh, micro suspensions and appoggiaturas through here. So you've got lay down to sol and then lay. Uh, down to sol again, but it's not lay in sol anymore. Now, or, or actually, yeah, I, sh I should, hmm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, let's keep listening. Now the D, the, the B minor chord becomes fa, sol, do in relative major to A major. Fa, sol, do. Now watch this. That's a sequential pattern. So what happens here is the chord that we get is E minor, right? Uh, the B is hanging out melodically up here. It's an E minor chord to an F sharp dominant seven chord to B. It's like uh, f uh, four, six, five, one, and B, right? They've already done four, six to five in the F sharp minor, but they haven't ever given you the F sharp minor chord, right? It flipped to A major. It, uh, and and landed here and then we get this lay sol do in that key and you get similar ideas like this skip up to an appoggiatura that has this little four to three res resolution over the b chord uh the exact same thing happens he takes this d that we land on and uses it as a third above this B flat, the exact same way that he used this B as a third above that G. And this becomes, guess what? G minor in first inversion down to an A7 chord. It's four, six, minor four, six, down to five to one. And it's uh, in D, right? And then this lands here with this G similar here. Uh, pushing up there. And the very cool thing that happens is they tonicize G and you land on it, but this little uh, suspension hangs out. But by the time we get here, it's going back and treating this chord as if it was like they're going back to F sharp, like the beginning. It's totally cool. We're here. Bum, bum. So they turn it into. In A. And then we're in Then Right? And then that turns in Le Fa Sol Sol and it's on a half cadence back in F sharp. The piece is in F sharp minor, but you never get an F sharp minor chord. It's completely brilliant and perfect as, a, um, as an opening sort of invitation into the rest of the piece. Wonderful, isn't it? Uh, now I wanna show you this new version that uh, I saw just last night and it just thrilled me. So you've heard that right now twice. Listen to this. It's the exact same piano part, but now they're singing in Hindi. And the Hindi lyricist is Niranjani Deshpanda. 
Uh, the vocalist is Saili Oak. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And the pianist is Rina Esmail. Okay, check this out. This is so, so wonderful. Here we go. Her ornamentation is beautiful. And the vowels that they use in this style are so intriguing to me. Wonderful. Wonderful, isn't it? So cool. Uh, it just goes to show you, the lyrics for this were written basically 200 years ago, like right now, the early 1820s uh, by Heinrich Heine. And it's about love. It's about finding relationships, a, a journey through the human experience. And that never goes out of style, no matter what culture or time that you're in. And uh, Schumann is a, a brilliant um, composer, especially of, of melody. And this is one of his specialties, uh, uh, this, uh, this song, this leader style of music, this repertoire. And it's one that I've taught uh, quite a bit in, in uh, collegiate level classes. It's, it's a great way for us to study um, how, to, how to write melody, how to harmonize melody, how to use um, uh, harmonic progression and uh, nuance and uh, just cradling these uh, uh, delicate melodies with little um, appositoras and distances that resolve and just fill our hearts. What a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful new version of that. It, it just thrilled my heart to see, uh, you know, <laughs> something in, in modern day Germany uh, from, you know, almost 200 years ago being reinterpreted uh, and, and sung beautifully uh, by people from uh, a culture that is uh, decidedly not German. <laughs> Uh, this is a piece that has been recorded prominently by many classic artists through uh, through the years. There are many, many recordings available. One of the classic ones that I love is the one by tenor Peter Pears and pianist uh, Benjamin Britten. Britten also being a, a really uh, well-known and brilliant composer in his own right. So uh, thanks for taking that little uh, trek with me down into a classical realm. Uh, but with a, a Hindi flair to it. Uh, wonderful stuff. Uh, thanks for being with us today, and we will see you next time on another edition of The Daily Doug.